morning. Good morning to all my friends and family and welcome. Welcome to Jim's 5am club and I'm coming to you from my front yard this morning. Uh, I've got a day off from work so I'm chilling out and uh, because I've got a few chores to do so I couldn't make it down to the beach to uh, go on a, a morning swim. Um, it was very cold and windy last night so I'd imagine that the, uh, the water would be quite uh, turbulent down there by the pool as the waves are smashing into it so I might go down later on this afternoon or uh, leave it to the weekend who knows but uh, what I want to do today is uh, just have a chat to you and uh, once again welcome you to Jim's 5am club and have a chat to you about a subject which I've got near and dear to my heart because today is a historic day it's a, a very very special day it's a day that most people, if not all of us, never thought we'd ever get to see. And today is the day that uh, the UK rolls out the vac uh, vaccinations for COVID-19. And who would have thought, who would have thought that on the 1st of January 2020, Paula and I were in Greece, other people would have been in Sydney, and everybody would have been with their family and friends celebrating and looking forward to 2020. But what came to us in 2020 was uh, beyond our wildest uh, nightmares in terms of uh, a, uh, a, a pandemic or something which is called a pandemic, which not, ne not necessarily is, but is uh, a, a concern, a concern for many people. Uh, because there was a lot of uh, contagion, a lot of infection, um, a number of deaths, and a lot of uh, media media coverage, and a lot of opinion uh, shared by lots of people, which, to a certain extent, um, you know, caused rifts in families, caused splits, in friendships, and forever has shaped our our, our social cultural landscapes um, don't know when the next time it'll be when I get to travel or Paul and I get to travel and go back to Greece but I'm just thankful thankful that I made the decision uh, late in December to uh, get on a plane and go to Greece for Christmas New Year's to catch up with family and friends and I'm one of the few one of the few people who will ever be able to say that they traveled to Greece in 2020 but uh, a, lot of, a lot of water has passed beneath the bridge since uh, I think February it was, where we went into uh, February, March, where we went into lockdown. And, um, and everybody was, uh, was in panic, buying toilet paper, um, clearing out the supermarkets, and just behaving in an irrational sort of fashion. And it was all media driven to a certain extent. Uh, the media just thrives on these opportunities to uh, create fear, uncertainty and doubt. But uh, as, as we all know, the, uh, the pandemic is very, very real. It, and it, it is very, very contagious and uh, it is dangerous for uh, certain members of the community, especially those who have uh, two or three comorbidities, uh, those who may have a heart condition, uh, may be suffering diabetes or have any other health condition which uh, may impact their immune system. But the good news is, is what we've learned is that for the majority of people, especially the, uh, the ones who are healthy, who, the ones who have got a, a, a good, resilient um, immune system, those who are, who are stronger in their health um, don't have much to fear and worry about uh, because uh, COVID-19 for many is just a, you know, a, a expressed in a very, very mild form. But we all have a, a, a role to play because we all can impact others around us. But the, um, the good news is for those who see it as good news, and uh, opinion is divided, 
uh, but I won't, I won't comment on, on opinion. But all I know is that science has delivered us a solution, a rapid solution. And uh, a lot of people question it and say that, you know, it's impossible. It takes five to eight years to go through the cycle. Uh, but I guess the question or the, the reality is that um, we all perform better and differently when we're under pressure. The mother of invention is necessity. And when you get all of the world's scientists, the best brains in the world, the best technology in the world, the uh, spirit of collaboration and the avalanche of investment that has gone into creating a solution to this once in a lifetime challenge. To me, it comes as no surprise that a vaccine has been produced, not only one vaccine, but there are three separate parallel vaccines that have been produced to uh, at least get us started. Um, it's funny that the people who were shouting loudest about the pandemic and creating the greatest fear, uncertainty and doubt <laughs> are also the people now who are creating further fear, uncertainty and doubt, saying that it's too early, it can't be true, um, and, and just creating once again more fear, uncertainty and doubt. The bottom line is that uh, a vaccine has been created, it's been tested, and from a statistical perspective, it passes the, uh, the sniff test, the pub test, and is a start. It's not perfect. It'll never be perfect because COVID-19 will continue to mutate and change and morph just like influenza does but you need to make a start you need to show leadership you need to show that we are capable human beings are capable of solving even the most complex problem you know while people say that the, the three the five to eight year cycle to produce a vaccine is the standard what I say is that that may have been the standard in the 80s. The world has changed today. You know, the standard uh, nine months ago was to get up in the morning, have a shower, shit and shave, get on the bus and go to work, sit in an office for 10 hours a day, looking at your screen, talking to your manager, talking to your co-peers, then uh, having a one hour lunch, and uh, when you finish work, get on the bus again, come home, uh, change and just sit in front of the television and relax. That was the way we worked. That was the standard four months ago. But uh, since then, things have changed. That standard is no longer the standard. <laughs> we, we need to understand that things need to change. We need to be flexible. We need to bend and stretch in order to survive, to grow and develop. And that's what we're doing at the moment with vaccines, with solutions. We know in science, we know in medicine that the placebo effect is very, very powerful. Just the fact that you know that there is a viable solution out there is enough to comfort people to make people feel more confident in terms of getting out of the house, socialising, trying to live a normal life again. So uh, all I can say is I welcome, I welcome the opportunity for a vaccine to be made available and I understand and respect that there will be people who will not want to get vaccinated for various reasons and they will need to understand that with that decision will also come consequences. Uh, they may not get to travel, they may not to get to go to work, they may not to get to do this, that and the other. They're the consequences. 
So uh, each and every one of us need to make a decision as to what we're going to do. And I seriously doubt that you're going to find a medical practitioner anywhere who's going to tell you, do not take the vaccine. Because they fear, like everybody else, that they'll get sued. Because if you get sick and die, or if you get sick and become incapacitated, then their advice is, is, uh, will have consequences as well. So, uh, as I say to other people, um, I don't have any fear. I don't fear the side effects of any vaccine because I've lived long enough to understand that nobody worries about any side effects. Because if you're worried about side effects, you wouldn't drink, you wouldn't get pissed on a regular basis and go home and cause problems with your family or friends. You wouldn't smoke for fear of getting ill. You wouldn't overindulge and binge eat to get fat and obese because you know that's gonna have its health and social consequences. You wouldn't have unprotected sex with anybody for fear of uh, getting a disease or for fear of fathering an unwanted child, which either fa fathering a child or being a uh, co-partner in an abortion. Um, so uh, you wouldn't get tattooed for fear of uh, impregnating your body with industrial inks with, that may cause harm further down the track. You wouldn't basically do anything, is the bottom line. You wouldn't take any risk. You wouldn't swim in the ocean for fear of being eaten by a shark. You wouldn't fall in love for fear of, uh, of falling out of love or being cheated on. Now, you name it. Look at your life. Look at everybody's life. You know? And at the end of the day, life is full of risks. But we need to take calculated risks and manage the process along the way. So um, the good thing about blogging is that you go on record. And today I'm going on record. And in one year, a hundred years, a thousand years, people may come back and look at this video and see what the uh, challenges were back in 2020. I've got to tell you, in some respects, 2020 was the worst, worst ever year for me. But in many, many other ways, it's been the best ever year that I've ever had. So uh, let's not look at life as, the, uh, as a cup half full. Uh, sorry, half, uh, half empty. Let's see it as half full and uh, live with positive expectancy. Be leaders, be tough, you know. If you, fear, if you fear dying, if you fear getting sick, if you fear injury, then you wouldn't bloody go to war. You know, think of all those people. I think of my grandfather when the bells tolled in Greece on the 26th of October 1940. He left his family and went to war like many, many people went to war and they suffered. They suffered the cold. They, they suffered waist deep snow. They suffered bullets and bombs and injury and seeing their mates dying. But they didn't stay at home with a mask on their face saying, I'm not gonna do this and I'm not gonna do that for fear, for fear of getting injured or for fear of being damaged or for fear of uh, getting hurt. They did it because it was their duty. And as it was their duty, we also have a duty to one another do the right thing and to uh, to not live in fear because as I've said time and time again as science tells us time and time again less than 10% of the fears that cross your mind will ever eventuate so a lot of those fears as we've said are irrational fears are fears that have been created that are fears that we've inherited, are fears that uh, we've infused by other people around us.
So all I can say is that man up and um, do your research, of course, but the more information you look at, the more confused you're going to get because it's a complex issue. It's a complex decision. And when you use your left brain to solve complex problems, you'll be overwhelmed and you'll, be, you'll procrastinate and you'll be frozen in fear. It's called analysis paralysis. For complex issues, for complex challenges like the one we face with COVID-19 and vaccinations, you need to go with your gut feel. You need to engage your right brain. You need to engage your subconscious and just go with it. So let's finish off with a positive affirmation. I'm alive, I'm well, and I feel absolutely great. To my friends and family, stay connected, stay relevant, and most importantly, do what you think is right. Do it for yourself, do it for your family, and don't worry. Don't worry about things that are not worth worrying about. Anyway, I'll leave it there and I'll pop up again tomorrow from another location with another message so we can have a shared experience and get through this day. Get through this day where we can help each other grow, develop and experience, experience uh, personal growth and development and uh, enjoy, <laughs> enjoy creation. Enjoy the gift of our lives and not to be sucked in to living in fear. It's just not worth it. Anyway, yes, us. Bye for now from Jim's 5 a.m. Club. Get the lemme. Cheers. Take care. Bye. <laughs>